Hi, uh, today we'll be building your first OpenSys model. Uh, first of all, um, just quickly comment on OpenSys is a framework for finite element analysis. OpenSys commands are inputted in TCL programming language format. Um, the interpreter OpenSys.exe um, interprets input written in an extended form of the TCL programming language. Uh, the extensions to the TCL language are for finite element analysis using the classes provided for in the OpenSys framework. Uh, how do we download OpenSys or the OpenSys interpreter? Uh, basically, we just go to the website that appears here on the screen. Um, you register, you just need to register your email. It's available for Windows and Mac. It is obviously free. and you might need to install um, the TCL language first in your computer, mostly uh, if you have a, a Mac computer, but it depends on, on, on each case. You will see the instructions in the website directly. Now, how do you write in TCL? Uh, well, TCL is a, a programming language with its own um, commands. So if you want to know more about these commands, you can go to the website shown here on the screen. Um, However, we will be practicing some of the very basic commands of this language uh, during this uh, tutorial and the videos later. So in this case, my recommendation is to use a word processor or editor that is compatible with programming language, in particular with TCL. I use PSPAD, however, you can use any other. Uh, there are some of them that are even better for, uh, for writing uh, code for OpenSys, so it's up to you. This is my recommendation. First, um, what model are we going to be building today? It's a two-story steel moment resisting frame uh, made on European uh, steel, S355. The columns will be modeled as distributed plasticity elements. The beams will be modeled as concentrated plasticity elements. Uh, in this case, HE180B for the columns, IPE220 for the beams. And we're going to perform a gravity analysis, a model analysis, a nonlinear incremental static analysis or pushover, and a nonlinear dynamic analysis or time history. Um, the layout for today's video um, will be first, we will talk about how to prepare for your model. We're going to go through the different stages of building a basic model, the one in the example. Uh, then we're going to talk about the analysis. And finally, at the end, we're going to be talking about how to use the information that you obtain from this analysis. Um, in particular, uh, for the first step, we need to plan ahead um, to know all the information about the structure. Uh, so we have a, a structure that will be built in a better order. So in particular, I'm going to start with an S355 uh, steel that has an FY of 355 megapascals and a Young's modulus of 210 gigapascals. Um, my elements, they have the dimensions shown here on the screen. And these are the dimensions of, uh, of my building in general. I'm going to be um, sorting out the tags for my nodes and elements in the following way. So the basic nodes and elements are these, one to six uh, representing the nodes that you can see here with a red circle, and one to six as well, representing the elements, one to four the columns, five and six are beams, um, represented by a green square. In addition, since I'm going to use a concentrated plasticity approach for the beams, uh, I need to set up uh, some extra elements and nodes um, that will enable me to connect these uh, concentrated plasticity springs. So basically the four extra elements will be the springs on each of the nodes of the joints of this structure. Uh, and there will be four extra nodes as well that will be, need, that will be connected uh, to the other node located exactly at the same position by a rotational spring. So in this case, for example, basically uh, nodes 3 and 7, they are located on the same position. 4 and 8, 5 and 9, and 6 and 10, they are all located respectively in the same position. Now for setting up the workspace, the first thing that you need to decide is 
uh, what units you will be using through the model. Um, doesn't matter because OpenSys is unitless. However, you have to be consistent through the model to avoid extra calculations. Uh, well, that's my advice at least. So um, in this case, we're going to be working with kilonewtons, uh, meters and seconds. Um, and in consequence, we will require to define mass in tons and we were going to be using kilopascals uh, in order to represent kilonewtons per square meter. So the first step uh, to write the, the model will be to define um, the dimensions and degrees of freedom per node. Uh, they are done by using the command model and basic builder. Um, in this case, ndm represents the number of dimensions, ndf the degrees of freedom per node, for my case, two dimensions, horizontal and vertical, uh, three degrees of freedom, that would be displacement in the horizontal axis, displacement in the vertical axis, and rotation along the transversal axis. Uh, other options for this could be one and one uh, for a one-dimensional problem, like for example, actual deformation of a, of a truss element. Um, another option could be three and six, for a spatial problem and well the, these numbers will change depending on on the requirements of each problem so this is my model um, that i am already building so i start by using the command wipe that will erase all of the variables that might be stored already so i start with a clean problem clean problem uh, or clean model um, i define the basic dimensions and degrees of freedom and then after that, I'm going to help uh, myself by defining some variables that will be useful in the future. They might not be very useful uh, at this stage for this small model, but for big models, uh, they definitely can save a lot of time in the definition of, of nodes, for example. So in this case, span is equal to six, representing the distance from column to column. And the story is 3.5, representing the distance from story to story. So the axis will be defined as x1 in 0, x2 in 0 plus 6. As you can see, when I call a variable, I use the dollar sign. Uh, and the horizontal axis will be defined in 0, 3.5, and 7. Um, after that, I will be defining the nodes. So in this case, uh, first I'm going to assign a variable to each of these tags from one to 10, the nodes that we mentioned before. So NA0 uh, will be one up to NB2PH uh, equal to 10. These nodes correspond um, to these uh, nodes on the screen that you can see. So one to six are the main ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, whereas seven to 10 are the ones to represent the plastic hinges or to connect the, the plastic hinges, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Uh, these nodes are defined then uh, first with a tag, as you can see here, and then with a coordinates where they are located, in this case, two coordinates, because we have uh, two dimensions in this problem, it's a two dimensional problem. Uh, so the first node, for example, NA0, that is node number one, it's located in X1 and set zero, basically zero, zero. As you can see, the nodes uh, for the plastic hinges are located at the, exactly the same location as those nodes uh, or as those main nodes are supposed to be connected to them. After that, uh, we will be defining the restraints and the constraints for these nodes. So the first thing is the restraints. In this case, uh, it refers to the, to the supports of the structure. For example, one and two are fixed to the base. So the command fix uh, uh, also followed by the node tag, in this case NA0 and AB0, will build uh, the, the, the restraint at this point, but I need to specify what degrees of freedom I want to restrain. So these ones here are Boolean uh, variables. So for example, one represents, yes, it's restrained in the horizontal direction. The second one represents, yes, it's restrained in the vertical direction. And the third one represents yes, it's restrained uh, for rotation. So 111 one, one basically means uh, restricted for all uh, degrees of freedom at this point, and the same for the other one. 
and then after that we're going to use some constraints that basically what they do is they tie uh, degrees of freedom of different nodes uh, to each other for example for the plastic hinges we will have a spring that will relate the rotation between 5 and 9 uh, with a nonlinear relationship that will be defined by a material and an element however at this point uh, we need to tie the the other degrees of freedom between 5 and 9 3 and 7 4 and 8 6 and 10 so um, there is a, a, a a simultaneous displacement for example or a transmission of forces between these nodes in all the degrees of freedom except the one that we're going to have the spring on so we use the equal dof um, command that basically requires us to have uh, one node the second node that will be tied to the first one and then the degrees of freedom that we want to tie so in this case one degree of freedom one and degree of freedom two that are uh, displacement in horizontal, displacement in vertical, and I, I don't add the tree because I want the rotation to be free at this point. We can see all the nodes and the restraints and constraints already built in our model. After that we will move on to the materials. Um, we're going to define a few materials in this model uh, and then we're going to discuss them. So they are like they appear here. Uh, basically, uh, for OpenSys, you can use a very long list of materials, very different materials. Um, each material has its own parameters, syntaxes, and limitations. Uh, and the materials are constantly being added on each version of the Open, OpenSys interpreter. Um, however, my recommendation is that you try to stick with the materials that are more commonly used, unless you have an application that cannot be done with these ones. Uh, because the materials are added in a wiki-like environment, which means that someone proposes a material, uh, this material gets added to the next version of the OpenSys. Uh, however, uh, the main materials are considerably more tested or uh, have been more tested in the past than the new materials. So the new materials are very likely to have errors or, or to have some kind of uh, voids that you might not be able to see straight away. So. For this uh, specific problem, as you can see, we have used uh, three different materials. First, what uh, we did is uh, we defined some variables to call these materials. So S355, it's, a, um, it's containing the tag number one, S355L, the tag number two, and Lignos IP220, the tag number three. Um, we have defined also some uh, parameters, just as variables, for example, the young modulus, uh, the FY of the S355, and this is the hardening in the steel material. Um, so the first material and that I'm defining here is a uniaxial material, steel 01. This material has uh, a, a, a bilinear uh, behavior, like we will see in a minute, um, and is defined first by a tag then the parameters that are required by this material are FY, uh, modulus of elasticity, and hardening, and some other optional parameters that we're not going to use in this, at this moment. Then we have the uh, uniaxial material elastic uh, that is represented by S355L that only requires the modulus of elasticity. Uh, for this specific model, this is not going to be useful uh, because in the definition of the element we can use an, an elastic element directly so I'm going to leave it here so you know it exists however it's not going to be used at, at this time and finally I'm going to use the billing material um, that is, uh, is going to represent the, the behavior of the plastic hinges as we will see uh, later just as a comment this material this uh, billing material um, the parameters obtained actually they are not shown all of them here there are plenty of them um, they are obtained uh, on this paper um, by professor Lignos and professor Krawinkler 2011 so you can refer to it in case you want to know more about this so the first material that I mentioned is still 01 this is uh, the behavior of the material basically that's why it has only a few parameters um, the second material is the elastic material. Basically, this is the one that we have defined there, uh, but you can also have a different behavior in tension and compression. 
and um, also the, this is the billing material that is based in the Ibarra Medina Craig-Winkler deterioration model uh, and like I said you can know more about it both in this website or directly in Professor Lignos and Professor Craig-Winkler paper. Uh, this material allows us to capture the deterioration of the of, of the spring of the plastic hinge in this case uh, in a very efficient way. Uh, once these materials are defined, as you can see here, we're going to define uh, the elements. In order to define the elements first, we need to understand what kind of elements we're going to be adding to our model. So um, there are three types of elements that we will be using today. Uh, the first one is the nonlinear beam column also uh, known as fourth beam column um, this is going to be used for the for the columns um, and it's a fiber based uh, element like i will explain uh, later in this tutorial for the beams we're going to be using an elastic beam column that as you can see here in the definition already has the modulus of elasticity and it doesn't require a material uh, a material tag um, like other um, uh, elements so definitely we can avoid def defining the elastic material and finally we have the plastic hinges um, that will be defined as a zero length element that is basically a, a, a spring in this case a rotational spring you can determine what will be the degree of freedom that you want it to be acting on um, what nodes it connects and what material is characterizing even you can have different materials for different degrees of freedom for the columns um, basically uh, we're going to be using a different approach than those from the beams so um, in this case the approach for the beams like we mentioned before is an elastic element uh, with two nonlinear springs at the end to represent the plastic hinges um, and for the columns we're using a fiber section that is basically uh, uh, different uh, fibers working in axial direction each of them and integrated at different heights of the column depending on how you set the the element uh, why are we with, are we doing this uh, basically because we don't want to, to have a very complicated model because the more refined the model is, uh, then uh, the, the more time it will take to run, which might not be significant in this case, but in a large model it is. So that's why we're defining the beams uh, as a, as a nonlinear spring hinge with an elastic uh, element connecting them. And the columns, we use this one particularly because we care about the interaction of the actual loads with the moments and this material, sorry, this element automatically accounts for this issue. The main disadvantage of this uh, fiber section is that it is unable to capture uh, the shear and the torsional uh, deformation and stiffness, uh, obviously, or stresses as well. So in some cases, particularly when we are modeling concrete structures, it might lead to inaccurate or incomplete elements so it has to be addressed by adding uh, some parallel elements um, that will compensate for this for this lack of, of stiffness in order to define um, the fiber elements the we need to define the section uh, that will be using these fiber based elements so that's the first thing we do here in order to do so uh, we use First, we're going to assign uh, a tag to this section. Uh, the tag is going to be called HE180B, that is self-descriptive. Um, after that, I'm going to call um, a routine, uh, a procedure that I will show you in a minute, that uh, it's stored in the file called wsection.tcl. So this file, wsection.tcl, is stored in the same a folder than my model and it's basically a fiber model builder uh, we this will enable us to use a, a procedure with these variables as you can see in here so basically we call the the file uh, the file contains this on the right um, so this file will enable 
or load this procedure that is also known as a function uh, and we'll make it available for the model then after it's available we go back to the model and we actually call this uh, procedure as you can see w section is the name of the procedure up here so it's going to call it and the input variables all of these ones that you see here are exactly these ones that you see here so basically is the section ID, that is the one that we defined uh, here before, um, the materials for the fibers, uh, the dimensions, certain dimensions in this case, uh, based on the column dimensions that I defined previously. And finally, these numbers here that represent the number of fibers on each uh, flange and web. For example, these two represent the flange uh, number of fibers. In this case, I am dividing the, the, the flanges in four by two. So each of these squares represents a fiber. And I'm doing the same with the web. So basically there are four fibers by two, eight fibers per uh, section. You can increase these uh, uh, a lot. However, obviously the more fibers that you have, the more time that your model will take to run. And to be honest, four and two is uh, very accurate for the purpose of my model at this step. So I will just leave it uh, like it is. After defining the sections, we're going to define the elements directly. So this section is will going to provide us with a section for the columns, for the fiber based elements. But then we have to define the element itself. So we use uh, these commands here. Um, basically, first uh, we are defining uh, the uh, or we are assigning a, a tag for the transformation, and we are immediately after defining the transformation. Uh, in this case, at this stage, uh, there are two options: uh, that is including the p delta effects or not including the p delta effects. As you can see here, I have uh, done the first one, commented the second one, so you just you just, you just have it as a reference. Um, in the case of a 3D model, it's a little bit more complicated than that because there are other parameters that you have to define in order to uh, determine what's the, the orientation of the um, sections themselves, if, if, if the strong axis is in one direction or it's another direction, but this is not a problem at this stage for a 2D problem. Um, then I am defining the number of integration points basically the integration points are um, these layers here in the model um, so each integration point uh, will uh, have uh, compatible deformations on all the fibers um, so the more integration points you have the more refined the model becomes the maximum number is 10 however again the the processing time will change. So four, I think, is accurate enough at this stage. Uh, I'm going to define first the columns by using the nonlinear bin column element. So I have my four uh, columns, one to four, like we assigned the tags before, growing, going from these nodes. The first one goes from node 80 to 81 with these integration points, in this case four, uh, with this section that we defined before. And as you remember, the section already has the material, so we don't have to define the material here. And finally, the transformation. In this case, we want to have into, to take into account the p delta effects, so we use this one here. After that, uh, we're going to define a couple elements. Sorry, a couple variables for the beam elements. In this case, the area and the inertia that they are obtained directly from the catalog. Uh, and I'm going to define the two um, elements. So in this case, the element is called elastic beam column instead of nonlinear beam column. Um, I define the two nodes as well. They go from plastic hinge to plastic hinge because remember that we have a springs connected uh, connecting the main nodes to the plastic hinges. So the beams it's themselves, they are connected to the nodes uh, of the plastic hinges. And then I have the area of the beam, the uh, junk modulus that is defined way in advance before there was a variable and the inertia. So as you can see, this is automatically elastic. We don't need to define a material either. And for the plastic hinges, uh, 7 to 10, I am connecting node A1 with node A1, so plastic hinge to main node. 
And the material that I'm using is the previously defined Lignos IP2220. And the direction is six. Uh, you might think uh, why the direction is six, because it should be three, but in this case, the zero length elements, they consider everything as three dimensional as six degrees of freedom which means that the degree of freedom that we have to to use in this case is degree of freedom six uh, rather than three you can observe that each of these numbers uh, relates to the numbers that we have defined before in our uh, model planning um, so they all match once uh, the elements are defined in our model we need to define uh, the loads and the masses so in order to do so in this case i have considered a distributed load for the beams of 20 kilonewtons per meter a concentrated load of 50 kilonewtons this is something that i just assign uh, before assigning a, a load i need to start or i need to define a, a, a time series uh, i would recommend you to just copy this uh, by now um, and then I will have to define the loads uh, themselves because in this case I, I am just defining a variable so I'm going to create a pattern uh, this pattern ID will be 1 and it will be working in the time series 1 so it's making reference to this this pattern is important that you take into account that has to change for, for other analysis so for example when you do the pushover analysis you have to use a different pattern otherwise it will give you an error so as you can see the the loads i have i am defining two different type of loads first the command load is going to to assign a concentrated load on a node whereas the l load is going to assign a, a load on a on a element in this case an element with a certain length and in this case uh, it will be a uniform load as you can see here um, they have different syntaxes for example for the concentrated load we have uh, first the node in which you want to assign this concentrated load uh, and then three different numbers representing the three different degrees of freedom so in this case i don't want anything in the horizontal direction i want a negative load so going downwards in the vertical direction equal to cl and i don't want anything uh, applied as a moment the same case for all of them basically i am applying this uh, load to represent a beam connecting in the other axis uh, directly um, supported on the column and then the um, element load is going to be applied on beams five and six um, and it will be uniform like i said and the definition or the amount in this case it's uh in this format so i'm going to use i'm using in all cases uh ex expression but it's just because i i sometimes i add more values here and also to add the minus sign so in this case the distributed load is assigned directly here as you can see now the masses um so you you need to consider that the masses are completely independent from the loads uh, which means that you can add a lot of loads on your model but if you don't have a mass then you will you will be unable to to run a model analysis for example or to have any kind of forces coming from an acceleration so in this case i'm going to define two masses mass one represents the mass on the first story mass two represents the mass on the second story i assign these variables remember this is in ton force because I am using kilonewtons um, so um, I'm going to add it by using the command mass first what node and then um, I'm going to, to add it also depending on the on the degrees of freedom since I am going to be analyzing this structure uh, based on the lateral loads I am only adding the mass in the lateral direction so mass uh, one divided by two because i have two different nodes at the first story and mass two divided by two because i have two different nodes at the second uh, story and nothing in the other two directions at this point uh, we have finished the definition of our simple model and we will proceed uh, with the analysis uh, in the next videos